discussion is good because when you have a discussion, that means many people are able to make comments, ask questions, so you learn even more, not just the play, but how people see and interpret what they got from the play. So the discussions are very important. I get lots from them because some of the experiences remind me of some of the experiences that maybe I or others have had right here in Philadelphia. Although the setting there is in Pittsburgh, but when they talk about jitneys and they talk about people in the neighborhood, it's really not that different. And I like the way that August Wilson captures the spirit of the average man and the average black man in his community. Because I can identify with that, although I'm not a man, I'm a female. <laughs> but I understand what he's trying to say and his commitment. There must be 500,000 different jobs a man can have. Now you tell me how somebody come to pick a dog shit up off the street. And you got him walking around talking about Caesar's sister does my laundry. God, how that make me look? My sister, a washerwoman? <coughs> Why don't you come back to work for me at the bakery? You sitting up here under Aunt Esther just watching time go by. Aunt Esther ain't got no time. She got both feet in the grave just waiting for the body to follow. You don't know nothing about Aunt Esther. She give me more than most other people. I've never been so at peace with myself since I've been here. I don't want to hear that. You can say whatever you want, but I don't want to hear that. I told you I can help you. You are a young woman. I'm doing just fine. You selling magic bread and overcharging rent. Putting people out in the street, I don't want no part of it. I give good value for my services. I got clean rooms. Quite naturally, if you don't pay the rent, somebody else will. I try to tell these niggas, this the city, this ain't the country. I can't wait till the crop come in. It's taken them a while, but they learn. Yeah, I sell magic bread. I got a big sign so you only have to eat half as much to get twice as full. <laughs> and I charge one and a half for it, for it so you don't have to eat as much. And I get, you don't understand, I give these people hope when they ain't got nothing else. They take that loaf of bread and make it last twice as long. They wouldn't do that if they didn't pay one and a half pounds for it. I'm helping the people. See, the, I done told you I'm satisfied right where I'm at. I don't want to be a part of that. Now, let's see. See, I remember when you was part of it. You, you were selling whole cakes with me. Or you was running the bakery. Now, why can't it be like old times? I miss having you work with me. I remember when we was working together. It wasn't about Caesar or Black Mary. It was about the Wilkes family. That was before you killed that boy. He was a thief. He was stealing. That's about the worst thing you can do. To steal the fruits of somebody else's labor, go out and work for it. That's what I did. I ain't never stole nothing in my life. That's against the law. Stealing is against the law. Everybody knows that. It was a loaf of bread, Caesar. He was stealing a loaf of bread. I give him an opportunity to stop. I told him he was under arrest. He started running with the loaf of bread under his arm. I had to shoot him. You can't do nothing like that and get away with it. People, people don't understand. The law is everything. What? Is it not? Look, people think the law is supposed to serve them, but anybody can see you supposed to serve the law. There ain't nothing about the law. That's what I try to tell these niggas. Everything come under the law. You got to respect the law. <laughs> yeah, unless you did. That's the only way you ain't got to respect the law. I remember a time when you would have laughed at him for stealing a loaf of bread. What happened to that season? I took an oath to uphold the law. See? You try to be like your mother. Yeah. I don't know why your mother never liked me. She tried to poison you against me, and you let her. See, you killing that boy over a loaf of bread ain't got nothing to do with my mother. You always try and hide behind that. 
I got to play the hand that was dealt to me. You look around and you see you black. You look at the calendar. Slavery's over. <laughs> I'm a free man. I can get up whatever time I want to in the morning. I can move all over and pick any woman I want. I can walk down the street to the store and buy anything my money will buy. There ain't nothing I can't have. I'm starting out with nothing, so I got to get a little something, a, a little place to start. You look and see the race you got to run is different than somebody else's. Maybe it's got more hills, maybe it's a little longer, but this is what I got. Now, now what to do with it? I look around and, and see where niggas got to eat and, and niggas got to sleep. I say, if I had some bread, I'd be a rich man. I got some bread. In the valley of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I started selling whole cakes off the back of a wagon. I cooked them over the coals. I got me some beans, selling them right, right out the pot. I even put a little pork in them. Police ran me off the corner, say I needed a license. It took me a while, but I got me a license. Yeah, I had to pay six or seven people, but I got me a license. Niggas say my bowls was too small. I got bigger bowls. Say I didn't put enough pork in the beans, I put in more pork. I got me some chickens. I charged extra for the big ones, and the people got mad. One man told me the chickens had big feet, but they didn't have big wings. <laughs> I, I seen I was in the wrong business. Said I was gonna let niggas eat on their own and give them a place to sleep. Only I didn't have no money to buy no property. I went down to the bank to borrow some money. They told me I needed some collateral. Say, you need something to borrow money against. I say, all right, I'll get me some collateral. I opened me up a gambling joint in the back of the barbershop. <laughs> Sold whiskey. <laughs> the police closed it down. Uh, I had to put some bullet holes in a couple of niggas and the police arrested me. They put me on the county farm. I had to bust a couple of niggas upside the head to try to steal some food. A couple tried to escape. I caught them. They don't do nothing but make it harder on everybody. They out there enjoying their freedom, ducking and dodging the law, and everybody else on half rations and got to make up their work. A fellow named John Hanson started a riot. I seen that wasn't going to be nothing but bad news. I took him on one to one, man to man. He busted my eye. That's why I can't see what's so good out my one eye. He busted my eye, but I put down that riot. They gave me a year. I did six months when the mayor called me in the seat. Say he wanted to put me in charge of the third war. Told me, say, you fry the little fish and send the big fish to me. <laughs> they gave me a gun and a badge. I took my badge and gun, I went down to the bank, and I <coughs> laid it on the counter. Told them I wanted to borrow some money on that. There was a fellow named Harry Bryant. Had a place on Carwell Street. He sold me. They ran him out of town. Charged me three times what it would work. Took the money and ran. They tried to kill him for selling to a Negro. I said, all right. All right, I, I, I got, a, got me a little stock. The niggas got mad at me. Said I must have thought I was a white man because I got a hold of a little something. They've been mad at me ever since. Everybody mad at me. You mad at me. It ain't about being mad at you, Caesar. You're my brother. I respect and honor that I always have and I always will. But we don't owe each other any more than that. I, I ain't got but one sister. And I try to do right for her and you push me away. Family is important. I know the value of family. Blood is thicker than water. It's been that way and always will be. You can't even water it down. Your mother, she want to turn blood into vinegar. Yeah, when Uncle Jack was dying, she wouldn't even go see him. Say he was fooling the people being a fake blind man. 
Well, well she, she was right. She was right. But that's her brother. He deserved better than that. You can't sit in judgment over people. That's God's job. God decides who done right or wrong. Uncle Jack dying and calling for his sister, and she wouldn't even go and see him. Yeah, that's the kind of mother you got. You let her run your life. Got you thinking like her. You think I'm wrong and don't even know it. Many a time I, I tried to make up to her, but she wouldn't have it. She called me a scoundrel. But that didn't stop me from preparing for her funeral. I paid for the funeral and even shed a few tears. If I had known any prayers, I would have said them. Why? Because she family. You give up on family and you ain't got nothing left. at the Robeson House, and we were talking about the whole aspect of the, the criminal and penal system. And um, we were talking about uh, those individuals who had been incarcerated for little or nothing and thrown in there. And I was talking to them, sharing with them a situation where the system back in the 60s and 70s said, if you were, for, for, for those of you who are around the table, you'll remember this name, Angela Davis. But for those of you who may not have had anything to do with the crime, just because you were uh, in a position to be on the outside or the edge of things or knowledgeable about things, you went to, the, to jail for that and many were killed for that. And I was sharing with them that here were young men that I visited in the, the jails who were lifers uh, because they had been in a position to be a part of organizations that were not satisfied with the justice system and took things into, into their own hands by just demonstrating, but, but became lifers. But it was interesting years after, and this is now the 90s, let's jump ahead. And I'm standing in the classroom teaching the financial management at Temple only to find that this guy looks familiar. And I finally said, Do I know you from someplace? He said, Yes. He said, You used to always come uh, to the prison. I was in the lifers' room. And it was shocking to hear him now sitting in my class, having been arrested back in you know, the day. But one of the things that, that I can uh, I can say about some of the characters in this book, irregardless to what their educational status was, they knew what they wanted and where they wanted to go in life for the most part. And I related I can relate to this young man because while he knew that he was in jail for life, what they did was to study while they were in jail. And most of those, I think there were 10, 10 of the largest, and most of them studied to either get PhDs or doctor's degrees, not knowing that they would ever be let out of jail, but that they saw a future. And I'm relating this back to many of the characters. They saw a future too, even though they knew the justice system in some cases were not, would not be on their side. And I think that this is what we're dealing with today. Because as I'm going through, and of course in my other life, I've had to, to deal with the community and, and these young people who are now part of the uh, Black Lives Matter who see something for themselves down the line but don't know how really to get there. And one of the, the most significant things that I'm preaching now is that we need to go back and read Paul Robeson's writings and read uh, and study 
his uh, his life and his uh, methodology and, and his suggestions and things because if you think about it, first of all, he was the quintessential uh, father of the civil rights movement and I would say today that he would be the father of this Black Lives Matter uh, uh, posture that many of the young people are taking. Uh, and I think that one of the things that we don't have a chance to do is to experience and share this kind of information uh, such as what has happened in particular with citizens and with others in the house to let people know that this same thing is happening today. Uh, but if you don't know your past, how are you going to deal with it? You mean Citizens United? Citizens? The, the character oh, in oh, here oh. is Citizens. And his mother named him intentionally citizen because she wanted to make sure that he understood that he was now a citizen or would be becoming a citizen of the of the United States, of the world, if, if you want to put it that way. So the name itself uh, was very significant for him, coming from his mother in that particular situation. <coughs> It's been a good day, Mr. Citizen. It's been a good day for you. Sometimes days run into one another, you can't tell one from the other. Now, I can look at you and see you a man got good taste. My husband like that. He was a man of good taste. He did. Now, <coughs> I told myself it couldn't be nothing but bad luck. Sometimes it's hard to tell bad luck from good luck. But then again, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes you're lucky and you don't even know it. Is you lucky, Mr. Citizen? Some people carry their luck with them. Some people got to go find it. Sometimes you find bad luck and good luck in the same place. I was lucky when I met Rupert and unlucky when I lost him. <coughs> Tell me about the man you killed. Tell me what you done. I stole a bucket of nails. The mill wouldn't pay me, so I stole a bucket of nails. They say Garrett Brown, Brown stole it. He ran and jumped in the river. I told myself to tell him I did it. But every time I started to tell them, something got in the way. I thought he was going to come out of the water, but he never did. I looked up. He was drowned. It's like I got a hole inside me. If I ain't careful, it seemed like everything would leak out that hole. To do, Miss Tyler. I know a man who used to raise pigs. Great big old pigs. To him, the pig was the beginning of everything and it was the end of everything. Whenever he looked, wherever he looked, he saw pigs. He saw pigs in the sky. He saw pigs in the ground. To him, the pig was the center of his life. One day, another man come along and killed all the pigs. He lost everything. He lost the center of his life. 
He lost everything he had because it wasn't inside him. It wasn't something nobody could take away. See, Mr. Citizen, right now that bucket of nails is at the center of your life. You only have one life, Mr. Citizen. It's your life. Ain't nobody else claimed it. You ain't gonna never forget that man who jumped in the river. There are times when it'll come and take hold of you and shake you. There ain't nothing you can do about that. It's them in between times that you can do something about it. You got to find something else to be at the center of your life. You got to find out why it was important for Garrett Brown to die rather than to take his study days. You know why he didn't come out the water, Mr. Citizen? Do you know why he chose to die rather than to be branded a thief? Because he didn't do it. We know he didn't do it. But why, Mr. Citizen? That's what we're trying to find out. Why would he rather die than say he was a thief? Because everybody would know. When they see him, they say, there go that man that stole that bucket of nails. He didn't care if anybody else knew what, whether he did it or not. He knew. He didn't do it for the people standing around watching. He did it for himself. He said, I'd rather die in truth than to live a lie. That way, he can say that his life is worth more than a bucket of nails. What is your life worth, Mr. Citizen? That's what you got to find out. You got to find a way to live in trust. If you live right, you die right. Like Garrett Brown. Do you know the story of Peter from the Bible? Peter denied Jesus three times before the cock crowed. That's what the Bible said. Say, verily, verily, I say unto you, before the cock crowed. You will deny me thrice. They asked Peter, do you know this man? And Peter said, no, I don't know him. Not once, Mr. Citizen. Three times. He said one time. Then he had a chance to think about it before he said it again. Right then, he could have redeemed himself. What you think, Mr. Citizen? Why did he deny him three times? Would you have denied him three times? I don't know, Miss Tyler. I don't know much about the Bible. The Bible says, Peter denied Christ three times. I always wondered about that. He had his redemption handed to him on a silver platter, but he didn't take it. I wonder, will you take yours, Mr. Citizen? If the wheel don't turn right, you got to fix it. I know a man went to fix the wheel. It was turning backwards instead of forward. Went to fix it and time he was through. The wheel didn't turn at all. You got to be careful. Things ain't always what they seem.
um, have had a wonderful afternoon on, at this discussion. I'm really, really sad not to be teaching, and that's probably the first time I've felt that way uh, this year I've been on sabbatical. Um, I feel so um, um, overjoyed about the exchanges that I, I heard going on over the course of the afternoon. Um, we have people that have been with us for all three years of the class. Um, I guess this is the f fourth year of the class, actually. And um, uh, it just gets better and better and better. And I think that um, it really encourages me. I'm really excited to get back and teach the class next year um, because I, I think that it can get even better. So um, such a, a wonderful thing to see the people that came out this afternoon, some people that um, I'm, are familiar to me that I've seen before, but meeting some new faces and seeing some new faces, and that is really a powerful thing. So pleasure to be here. Um, and, and be part of this record. Um, and we're looking to do this uh, for many. Different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding, I'm finding so, many so many different mentalities mentality today. today. It seems, it seems hard. hard. It seems it challenging. challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. on. Everything else, else is a challenge. Is a challenge. challenge. Um, um, so, 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 I'm ready for, I'm this, ready challenge. for this challenge, and I was built, and I was for, built this. for this. I think that, I think we, that all we all have a purpose in life, in life. and mine is going to take on a test that, that most of that most are back away from. Back away from. from. Impossible. That impossible, impossible. So people, people say it's impossible, I see possibilities. I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible. impossible.